Hello everyone. Welcome back to another lecture of Heat Exchanger Network Design on Aspen Energy Analyzer. Before starting this tutorial, if you have not subscribed yet, please do subscribe the channel and click the bell icon so you get all updates related to this channel. So this is our example number three, and we have been given four stream problem. Two streams are hot streams, and two streams are cold streams. So this cold stream, which is entering at 20 degree centigrade and exiting at 135 degree centigrade, having CP of two, the hot stream entering at 170, outlet at 60 degree centigrade, and CP value is three. The cold stream it is inlet 140 degrees outlet, and CP value is four, and This hot stream 150 degrees centigrade is inlet, 30 degrees centigrade is outlet, and the CP value is 1.5. And we will be going to solve this system with a delta T minimum of 10 degrees centigrade. This is the summary of this system, which we have computed that the pinch temperature is 85 degrees centigrade, the hot pinch temperature is 90 degrees centigrade, cold pinch temperature is 80 degrees centigrade, hot utility is 20 kilowatt, and cold utility is 60 kilowatt. So now what we will do, we will draw this system. In Aspen Energy Analyzer, first we will see that whether we are getting the same values or not, and then we will move to the heat exchange network design. And before going to the designing, obviously we need to remember the basic concepts that this algorithm should be followed for above pinch, and this algorithm should be followed for below pinch. So let's move to Aspen Energy Analyzer. So I have represented the system over here, and for a recap. That first you need to specify the stream name, then you have to enter the properties, the inlet temperature, the outlet temperature. Either you can specify CP or enthalpy. And similarly, number two, number three, and number four, all these streams are added up. Now the next task is to click on Open Targets View, and here we have to enter the value of delta T minimum for our system. Luckily, this is ten, and this is same as that of our system. But if the value is different, like twenty, thirty, forty, and so on, then you have to change it here. And the heating utility is 20 kilowatt, cooling utility is 60 kilowatt, hot pinch temperature 90, cold pinch temperature is 80. It is the same temperatures and the same heating utility and cooling utility requirements as we have computed manually. But you see the other values like area targets, cost index targets, number of unit targets are missing. Why? Because the heating and cooling is not sufficient. Why it is not sufficient? Because we have not specified the utilities. So what we need to do? We need to go here the utility streams. And first, we will specify the hot stream. Let's do it. Like we have to check whether LP stream is sufficient or not. If we click on LP stream, it becomes sufficient. So okay, we will take it, and then we will go to the cold stream, which is cooling water. It is sufficient, so we will take it. And once we go back, and we can see that they are now sufficient, and we are getting the area calculations and cost calculations over here. If we want to see the composite curve, this is the composite curve which you have drawn. Using graphical method, and we have already learned it. And then the grand composite curve, and this tab is used for heat exchanger network design. So we will click it, and we will move here. Our first task, as we have discussed in our previous lecture, is to divide the system at pinch. And how we can divide it by clicking this button. And as we can see, there are four streams above pinch and three streams below pinch. So the rule is satisfied. What was the rule that for above pinch number of hot streams should be less than or equal to number of cold streams? So these are two. These are two rules satisfied. Below pinch number of hot streams should be greater than or equal to number of cold streams. Hot streams are two. Cold stream is one. Rule is again satisfied. So now what we are left with? We have to now check the values of CP. CP of hot stream should be less than or equal to CP of cold stream above pinch and opposite in case of below pinch. This is LP stream. As heating utility, this is cooling water as cooling utility or cold utility available for the system. And if you remember the golden three rules, these were the hot stream should be used above pinch or it cannot be used below pinch, and cold stream can be used below pinch but it cannot be used above pinch, and we cannot transfer heat across the pinch. So I have prepared an Excel sheet, and this is the Excel sheet. Now we can make the task very simpler if. We use this sheet, but how? I will show you. I have simply copy pasted it and place the value. Now I know that these number one and number three are cold streams, and number two and number four are hot streams. So this is the first step 
and we are going to solve the above pinch system. Now, we know that the cold pinch temperature is 80 degree centigrade and the hot pinch temperature is 90 degree centigrade. So, what we need to do? We need to specify here as that above pinch this stream is from 80 to 135. Above pinch this stream is from 170 to 90 degree centigrade. The basic concept. It is already at 80 degree centigrade. So, no need to change anything at 150 to 30. So, it will be 150 to 90. So, you can see the heat loads over here. 110 and 240 for the cold streams, 240 and 90 for the hot stream. Now, if you look at the number 2 and number 3 stream, these two, these two have equal heat loads. It means we can transfer heat between these two streams and these two streams heat capacity or the heat load will be satisfied and we do not need to match these streams with anyone else. So, first thing which we need to check that CP of hot is less than or equal to CP of cold, yes. CP of hot is 3, CP of cold is 4. We can easily place the match between these two streams. So, what we need to do? We have to come here. Which stream is, it is 2? It will be mapped with 3. Numbering should be same. 2 and 3. You can either place the numbering like H1, H2, H3 and so on. It's up to you. To double click the exchanger. Tie it. It is from 170 to 90. This is one way of doing it. And then try 80. It means the stream will start here at 80. And this is the outlet which is 140. This is one way of doing it. That you had specified the pinch temperature of hot stream. What is the other way of doing it? That instead of specifying, you know that both these streams are going to heat exchange with between them completely. Like it has to give up a heat of 240 kilowatt. It has to take the heat of 240 kilowatt. So when this is the condition, you can either specify the pinch temperature or you can specify the cold stream completely because you know the inlet, you know the outlet. So you can see it is the same as that of the previous case. Now, it means that above pitch, these two streams are not available now. So, what we are left with numbers 1 and number 4. And as we can see, the CP of hot is less than equal to CP of cold. And remember this point, we require hot utility above pitch. It means hot utility will be allocated to the cold stream, not the hot stream. And as we can see, the hot stream requirement or the hot stream can give away 90 kilowatt while it is requiring 110 kilowatt. So it means the remaining 20 kilowatt will be coming from the utility. So what we will do, we will place an exchanger between these two, the number 4 and number 1 stream. Double click it. Inlet temperature is 150. Obviously, in this case, we are not knowing the outlet temperature. So we will just specify the pinch temperature, which is 90. And again, we cannot tie it with 20 because 20 is the temperature which is not above pinch. 20 to 80 degree centigrade is the region which is below pinch. So we have to start from this point. And at this point, the temperature is 80 degrees centigrade. And as you can see, it is 125 degrees centigrade. Remember one thing that DT, which is the value of temperature difference at both ends should be positive. This is the hot end, means 150 minus 125. The answer is 25. This is cold end, 90 minus 80, 10 degrees centigrade. If this DT is not positive, then the answers will be infeasible or the exchanger will be infeasible. So, we will come back at the utility exchanger at the end because there is one tricky point here as well. So, this concludes above pinch system. Now, we will move to the below pinch system and I will simply, what I will do, I will again copy paste it. Now, we know that again, I will just highlight it for better representation. This stream is now 20 to 80 degree centigrade. This stream which is earlier 170 to 60, below pinch it is 90 to 60. This stream is no more in the system because it is completely utilized above pinch. And for number 4, it is from 90 to 30 degree centigrade. So, as we can see that the hot total requirement is 180 kilowatt or it can exchange 180 kilowatt. But the cold, which is the only available process stream in the system below pinch can take a maximum of 120 kilowatt. It means for the remaining 60 kilowatt, we need a cold utility because it will be applied with the hot stream, process stream basically. So, we have placed the matches but before that, we have to check the rule of CP. If we see the stream number 2, it can map or match easily with stream number 1 because CP of hot is greater than CP of cold. But in case of mapping 4 with 1, there is an issue because CP of hot is less than CP of cold but below pitch we can bypass this rule. There is a provision available in heat exchange network design, but for this, 
the dt at both ends should be equal to or greater than delta t minimum currently the delta t minimum in your system is 10 degree centigrade it means when we design such a heat exchanger then uh, and we install a heat exchanger between the stream number 4 and stream number 1 then dt at both ends should be greater than or equal to 10 so if it is possible then we will apply it if it is not possible then unfortunately we have to go for stream splitting so what we will need to do we will have to come back here and install exchanger between stream number 4 and stream number 1 double click it it is from 90 to 30 degree centigrade it will exchange its heats completely because it can give away 90 kilowatt it still has a potential to take 30 kilowatt it means we know its outlet temperature and inlet temperature and in this case we also know one of the temperatures and the other temperature will be unknown so starting from 20 and you can see at this end the dt is 10 at this end it is 25 and what was the delta t minimum 10 so satisfied so we can install exchanger here as well and then installing exchanger between 2 and 1 which is of no issue because cpu is already higher but in this case the cold stream will not be available but hot stream will be left and for this cold utility is required so what do you need to do click here place exchanger here obviously it is going above pitch no need to worry 90 we cannot tick 60 because it means the hot stream is giving away all its heat to cold stream but that is actually not the case because its requirement is merely 30 kilowatt while it has to give 90 kilowatt so once you tie it as you can see dt is positive at both ends and the process to process heat recovery is completely now there is no more process to process heat recovery is left like there are four exchangers this one of 240 kilowatt 90 kilowatt 30 kilowatt and 90 kilowatt so this is the overall process heat recovery while for the remaining like 60 kilowatt for this process stream and 20 kilowatt for this process stream we require utility exchangers so what we need to do first we install exchanger over here click it place it and simply tied it so as you can see dt at both ends is positive no issue but now there is another issue issue which is coming up and i was telling you that i will tell you at the end or later that now i will install the last exchanger between lp steam and process stream and if you see when i tied it the dt at both ends is negative it means that this utility is not sufficient for the process earlier it showed that it is sufficient but there are some cases that when you come to this point the dt values are negative and that makes the exchanger infeasible because there is a temperature cross so what we need to do we need to go back and we need to just simply change the utility stream type and change it to mp steam and again come back and you can see this tab is now green it means that all the exchangers are installed successfully there is no stream left in the system and you can also check from here the open unsatisfied stream no stream is left unsatisfied so it means you have properly designed the heat exchanger network on s energy analyzer now if you want to check the costing of the system this is the overall cost like heating cost cooling cost and it is 100% of target like where you can see the target if I take you back again and you can see these are the values which are available in the target and these are two different values like this is target and this is what you have achieved in the real time so as you can see the capital cost 2.044 10 to power 5 while the estimated was 2.135 so you have actually designed a better system and you have saved the cost similarly the total cost and if you want to open the network performance the number of units required was eight while you have designed six so it means you have done the better job and you have reported or you have designed lesser than the target however you have exceeded a bit in the area so obviously you can manipulate the design and do different work on it to get area reduced but in that case the number of units might increase the number of cells might increase or maybe it will be all 100 percent so that's our, again our trade-off between all these values so that's it from this lecture thank you so much till then it's goodbye stay tuned